For more, I'm joined by Bob Bixby, executive director of the Concord Coalition, a Virginia-based group that advocates for balanced budgets. He joins us now from our Washington bureau. Mr. Bixby, welcome to Bottom Line. We appreciate your time today. Good to be with you. Uh, before we get to the balanced budget amendment and the talk about that, a couple of years ago, back in 2009, you were expressing concerns about this very issue. What were they? Well, I mean, I think that we've been warning about uh, uh, unsustainable budget deficits for quite some time. And uh, it's been clear that even if we had a short-term situation that looks sustainable, we have these uh, massive uh, budgets, uh, deficits that are embedded in, in current law, basically, because of the uh, huge retirement and health care costs of the retiring baby boomer generation. And the revenues just uh, aren't enough to keep up with these uh, commitments. And so we're going to have to make some very hard choices about uh, fiscal policy to keep ourselves uh, from getting swamped by uh, excessive debt. Mr. Bixby, would one of those hard choices that has to be made, would that involve a constitutional amendment calling for a balanced budget? Well, I think that uh, that actually, in, in this context, may be the avoidance of a hard choice. Uh, you know, I, I have been in favor of a balanced budget, uh, but, uh, you know, that was in the 90s. We had a, a little bit different context now. I think that uh, where the boomers are already retiring, we have an enormous uh, fiscal challenge that is not off in the future. It's right now. Uh, and I would be a little bit concerned that we would spend a lot of time uh, debating a balanced budget uh, amendment to the Constitution when we should be debating changes in policy that will actually get us on a more sustainable fiscal path. Changes in policy, would that also include what the White House has been trying to say? They're saying maybe a more balanced approach, that you do have to have cuts on the spending side. But since we have right now, since the 1950s, the lowest level of tax revenue coming in, are tax cuts or, excuse me, tax increases going to have to be a part of the equation? Uh, I think so. I mean, I think that you, I, I'm sort of a fan of the big, big deal approach. I think that the Bowles Simpson Commission uh, <clears throat> headed about right. I think that the Rivlin, uh, Dim, uh, Rivlin Dimenici Commission, which I served on, uh, headed about right. We had a, a mix of uh, mostly spending cuts, but there were some revenues, mostly in the form of uh, reforming tax expenditures, which are uh, closing deductions and credits and that sort of thing. People refer to them sometimes as loopholes. I think that's a little bit too casual. A lot of those tax expenditures uh, are kind of like entitlements and, and, and benefit uh, Americans uh, and they're quite fond of them, like the mortgage interest deduction and things like that. But Mr. Bixby, you have heard the criticism from the right. They say that any tax increase is automatically a job killer. How do you respond to that? Well, I mean, I think that's just silly. I mean. <laughs> I think that uh, to, to take any particular given level of revenue or spending and say that, uh, you know, if we, if we uh, raise revenue, we're going to kill the economy. Uh, you got people on the other side that would say if we cut spending, we're going to kill the economy. What's going to kill the economy is unsustainable debt. And we're going to have to do some things probably on both sides of the ledger uh, to, to bring that under control. Mr. Bixby, you've been following these debt ceiling negotiations. As is often the case in Washington, things seem to be going down to the wire. Is a deal going to get done? I'm not sure, which is pretty remarkable. I mean, the idea of the United States defaulting in any form, doesn't have to be on its debt, but just not paying its bills, uh, would have been unthinkable up until uh, very recently. Uh, I, I think they could get so close to the edge that they may fall over it without even um, wanting to. So I think there's a very dangerous game that is being played right now. At some point, uh, something will get done because it has to. But whether or not there's going to be a crisis in the interim, uh, I, I, I couldn't say. I think we're very close to it. Mr. Bixby, there have been a lot of folks, a lot of opponents of this administration, this White House, saying that the President and Treasury Secretary Tim Geithner are just using scare tactics, that if we do, in fact, go to default, it might not be as bad as the White House says. What do you say to those people? Well, I mean, I, I think that that's... Uh... Look, if, if you're not going to pay your bills, that's not being fiscally responsible. That's being a deadbeat. And I don't think we want to jeopardize the creditworthiness of the United States by declaring Uncle Sam to be a deadbeat. Uh, so, look, we could continue to pay some bills. There's no question about that. And we could probably continue to pay interest on the debt. 
but we would not be able to pay all of our bills this, without borrowing authority is no question and so some bills would not get paid and uh, you know the, the people that wouldn't get paid would would uh, would um, uh, certainly be angry about that and I think uh, in total the, the American people would be angry about it because it would it would symbolize the government out of control I really don't think mm -hmm. that that is a uh, a reasonable uh, rational or responsible uh, position